Uh, uh, <laughs> 12 minutes past seven is the time. <laughs> uh, holidays, that's what we're talking about. The green list that this government, the government has and whether or not it's going to change. There's an announcement today, Ben. Yes, uh, this traffic light system that we've heard so much about, a lot hanging on whether any countries will be added to that green list. Crucially, we should keep an eye on whether any countries are taken off it. Mm. That's what could have a huge impact. Thanks very much. Uh, uh, good morning to you too. We're talking about that traffic light system that was introduced last month in an attempt to restart foreign travel. Well, at the moment, most of the world is off limits. Most popular destinations are on the amber and red list, and that means that people shouldn't be travelling to those countries for holidays. Anyone else who's maybe travelling for business, for example, have to quarantine on their return. Now, you can go on holiday to countries that are on the green list. For now, though, that covers just a handful of places. You won't need to quarantine on your return, but, of course, you still need to take tests before you go and when you get back. The tests can add hundreds of pounds to the cost of a holiday. Well, Nicola and her friends have just returned from a week in Portugal. We had a test 72 hours before our departure date, which I went to a laboratory site to get on the Friday afternoon. Um, we showed that when we got to the airport in the UK. We also showed that on arrival. Um, and then to return, we did a test again 72 hours before we came back. It was a lateral flow test that we'd taken with us. Um, we showed evidence of that um, on our return back to the UK. And we also showed evidence that we had booked a test to do on day two. So today is my day two and I've just done my test and I'm waiting for the results. Those three tests were, uh, I did shop around for prices. They were about £200 in total. So some of the logistics that people are having to organise before they go and when they get back. And later today, we're expecting that green list to be updated. Countries will only be added or removed, remember, based on a strict set of rules like the percentage of the population that has been vaccinated and the rate of infection. Well, based on that criteria, there is speculation that countries that could be added to the green list today include Malta, Finland and the Canary Islands. So let's speak to Cristina del Rio Frese, who's leader of the Global Tourism Safety on the Canary Islands. She joins us now this morning. Cristina, welcome to BBC Breakfast. Um, and what I've just been explaining there is that you, one would assume, is ho are hoping that you will be added to this green list so you can welcome British travellers back. Good morning, men, and good morning to everybody. Uh, well, we are willing to receive very good news from today on uh, being included into that green list. Uh, well, we are aware of the importance of the tourism for the Canary Islands, but mainly the British market, the UK market, is quite important. It means 40% of uh, the total uh, income of the people that is arriving to the Canary Islands year by year, and we have a very strong relationship. So today is a very important day also for us because most of our economy, nearly 35% of our economy, depends on tourism. So it's quite important for us to uh, these kind of decisions. Yeah, and what you are hoping is that the islands will be treated differently to the mainland, which would allow you to open up more quickly than the rest of Spain. And that would be one of the big issues. Yeah, that's the big issue uh, nowadays is that one. And I think it's quite important to understand how the, the islands have behaved during the all the pandemic situation, how we have managed the epidemiological rates. And now we have a very uh, safety situation. Most of the people is already vaccinated and our health department is assuring that most of the people will be vaccinated 70% by the end of July. So I think we have a very good rates. We have to separate these figures from the one from mainland Spain, which have had uh, several travels. It's a pity, but it's, uh, we have the being on islands and being the, also the British islands. Uh, you know the difference and how we can control the borders and make it much more safety. But I think the, the islands should have a different regulation. And especially the Canary Islands have a very strong relationship with the, the United Kingdom. And I think we, we should be treated in a different way as Madeira is and Madeira has a more or less a similar rate we have nowadays. Uh, mm. Christina, tell me what it will be like if people are coming to the Canary Islands. What can they expect? Because a lot of the criticisms are that holidays are just not the same right now. It's a mask on the plane, it's a mask at the airport, it's testing before and after. The holiday experience is not what we would expect. What is it like where you are? Well, nowadays is exactly what they're saying nowadays. Uh, tests are still uh, being required and the people uh, should be using a mask. But the good news are that the, in the near future, it will be removed. Uh, the Spanish government is already discussing about it. And uh, when we get to the 70% of the people already vaccinated, 
plus if the rates, the epidemiological rates are the incidence is uh, down to 50 or even less people every 100,000, they will remove it from the open air, uh, uh, open spaces. You can go to street and whatever you want without the mask. And we think it could be around the end of July. And the other measures are uh, being taken down step by step, going like in the United Kingdom, we're in a escalate nowadays. So bars are open. Uh, for example, in the Canaries, there there are mo much more people going out, uh, dining outside. So we're recovering the, their normal situation day by day. Uh, how confident are you that you will be added to that green list? Well, uh, we, we checked yesterday and we're 50-50. I think uh, it's clear for us and for you and for the, for the British tour operators and airlines and all travel agents and all the sector and the people there are willing to travel and we're willing to welcome them here in the in the Canary Islands. So I think mm. part of it, uh, this is emotional. and But the other one, I think it's logical to understand how safety it is to travel to between islands. Yeah. So for the United Kingdom, it should be there. I think it's the right decision in an economical and also in a safety way. I yeah. know the travel, you know, the uncertainness. Okay. But I think it's very important for us and, and from the British uh, tourism sector as well. And, and Christina, what happens if you are not added to that list? Does that mean that summer doesn't happen in the Canaries as far as tourism is concerned? Well, it would affect the economy. We have been suffering the zero in uh, tourism activity since last year. It has been a dramatic situation for many companies, hoteliers, bar, restaurants, and people is willing to work. We need to start uh, the activity as soon as possible. And as the British market is so important for us, uh, we, we need to be sure, and people need to be sure that they will be working in the near future. We hopefully uh, start to, to operate with you from the 21st of June on. And and I know how difficult it is, but uh, we do need it. We do need it in in in, in an economical way. And there are a lot of people uh, that has no job nowadays, and uh, the economical impact in the Canaries is being huge. Yeah, yeah absolutely, and you can see that impact, of course. Um, and just clarify for me, lastly, Christine, if you will, uh, changes to what we will need to prove to get there. So not necessarily a test, but proof of vaccination is now is now acceptable. Yeah, that's all. Only with the test of vaccination, everything will be uh, solved. Uh, you know, the European passport will not be available until the 1st of July, but I think they will not be necessary. Yesterday, they approved a new regulation here in the, in the Canary Islands. And if you have been vaccinated, all you need is a certificate. There is only a small point if you have received two doses. If you have two doses, uh, you have to travel uh, 15 days after the, the first one. That's the only condition to, to be accepted, but, but that's all. It will be much easier, I think, for the, for the British uh, because they have already been vaccinated in a huge number. So I think the UK citizens are in, in a good position in, in this case, in a very good one. Christina, it's really good to talk to you this morning. I know you'll be looking at that announcement later today very closely. Uh, I wish you all the best. Yeah. Thanks very much, Christina De La Ria Fresen, you, their man. leader of the Global Tourism Safety Board in the Canary Islands. Uh, so, quite clearly, a lot of countries, uh, including the Canary Islands, vying to be on that list because tourism is so important, as we were just hearing, for their economies. If they don't make the list uh, in today's changes, the next review isn't for another three weeks and that really starts to eat into that key summer getaway period for many travel firms so they will be vying to get on the list today and as i said remember all eyes on places like portugal as well to see whether they can stay on the list having already welcomed thousands of travelers remember it can work both ways it's not just about adding to the green list it's about potentially taking off from that list as well uh, so that announcement on any changes is expected about five o'clock today really emotive because we're all desperate for a bit of sun aren't we but of course they're trying to make it. sure we can do it safely we've had it is that it is that summer it's not it it's not <laughs> it carol will tell days. us more later but at least we've had some it has been a it nice welcome better. change for a bit of sunshine yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> ben thanks very much